Hey beautiful people of the living God, this video is about overcoming versus overcome. Are you an overcomer or are you overcome? God, Christ, Holy Spirit, Holy Angels, Holy People, those in the body of Christ want you to overcome. And I want you to overcome as well. So we're going to go and get into this lesson that God wants me to do for the, his people. Overcome or overcomer. So 1 John 5 and 4. For whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Our faith. And, okay, Doctrine and Covenants 63 and 20. Nevertheless, he that endures in faith and does my will, the same shall overcome. Oh, it tells us that here in 1 John 5 and 4. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Nevertheless, he that endures in faith and does my will, the same shall overcome and shall receive an inheritance. So when you overcome, you receive an inheritance upon the earth when the day of transfiguration shall come. So, um, you know, the day of transfiguration is when God says he's going to change you in the twinkling of an eye. You're going to be transfigured to your glorified body, right? When the earth shall be transfigured, um, um, if you look at my video, when God showed me the vision of the supernatural and the spiritual manifesting into the physical, uh, I think this is why he took me to these scriptures and um, I learned a little bit more that it's in his word. When the earth shall be transfigured, even according to the pattern which was shown unto my apostles upon the mount, of which account the fullness you have not yet received. Well, it wasn't shown to me like that. It was shown to me in a vision. And now, verily, I say unto you that as I said that I would make known my will unto you, behold, I will make it known unto you, not by the way of commandment, no, he didn't let, let me know by commandment. It was by vision and telling me, right? For there are many who observe not to keep my commandments. Oh, wow. So let's read this again. So I will make it known unto you, not by the way of commandment. For there are many who observe not to keep my commandments. Now, Revelations 3 and 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Right? John 1, first book of John 5 and 5. He, who is he that overcomes the world, but he that believes that Emmanuel is the son of God. Now, Revelations 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. Romans 12 and 21, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, Doctrine and Covenants 50 and 8, but the hypocrites shall be detected and shall be cut off, either in life or in death, even as I will. And woe unto them who are cut off from my church. For the same are overcome of the world. So there's people who are overcome of the world. And there's people who overcome the world. By their faith. And the Lamb of God. Doctrine and Covenant 64 and 2 to 4. For verily I say unto you. I will that you should overcome the world. Wherefore I have compassion upon you. So his will is that you overcome the world. Wherefore I have compassion upon you. There are also among you who have sinned, but verily I say for this once, for my own glory and for the salvation of souls, I have forgiven your sins. He forgave your sins for his own glory and for the salvation of souls. He's forgiven your sins so you can live. I will be merciful unto you. He says he'll be merciful unto you. That's why you should repent. I don't care what you did. Repent before God. For I have given unto you the kingdom. Re Revelations 3 and 21. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. 
Remember, if we go back to my other video, it talks about Christ's thrones, now the Father's throne. So, you know, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Romans 3 and 4. God forbid, yeah? Let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightst be justified in thy sayings, and mightst overcome when thou art judged. Revelation 3 and 7. And it was given unto him. Now you have to know that there's power that's given to Satan to overcome the saints. But you got to overcome him with the power of God and the power of the Lamb and your faith in prayer and their faith in God's word. Revelations 3, 13 and 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So Satan was given he was given to make war with the saints and to overcome them. You're supposed to overcome them with the Lamb. You're supposed to overcome them with God. You're supposed to overcome them in faith and prayer. And power was given him over all kindred. You're supposed to oh you're supposed to um overcome him with the power in Luke 10 and 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on scorpions and serpents and over all power of the enemy. Nothing by any means shall hurt thee. You're supposed to overpower and overcome Satan with a power in God's word because there's power in God's word when you execute it properly. Right? And, and the power was given him over the kindreds and tongues and the nations. So the he, he has power over nations, tongues, and kindred. To who? To people who are not walking in the power of God and their power and authority of God because they don't use God's word. And Satan, you have to defeat him with God's word. All right? So you have to know God's word to defeat him. But God says not everybody knows his commandments. So that's why out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He'll tell you. He'll make it known to you. Knowledge is to know, right? And he'll make you understand. God is understanding, all right? So Revelations 12 and 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. How are you going to overcome Satan's power? By the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, by the word of God and the word of your testimony, testifying and rebuking Satan. And you need to know, I rebuke thee, Satan. Didn't he say that? You need to know, use the scriptures against Satan when you see him attacking your life and your family. I rebuke you from my life. I rebuke you from my children. I rebuke you from my marriage with the blood of the lamb. I, re I have, behold, I have power over you, Satan. Nothing by any anything you do will not hurt me. Luke 10 and 19. I rebuke you with Luke 10 and 19. You have to know God's word to defeat and conquer Satan. It's power and destroy it, right? And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Because when you're in when you're fighting for God, it's constant fighting against that thing, that old serpent. Satan doesn't fight people who don't understand God's word. Satan fights people who do understand God's word. The wicked fight those who understand God's word, not the ones that don't. The ones who speak the truth, not the ones who know half truth and and speaking lies. Those are called hypocrites. Satan doesn't care for the hypocrites. Because he knows a hypocrite can't stand before God. Now, Doctrine and Covenants 38 and 4 to 25. I, I am the same which have taken the Zion of Enoch. You need to read about that. Into my own bosom. The woman Zion... And verily I say, even as many as have believed in my name, for I am Christ, and in my own name, by the virtue of the blood which I have split, have I pleaded before the Father for them. So Christ is telling you, he, he is, by the virtue of his blood, he split and pleaded to God for your lives so you could live. But behold, the residue of the wicked have I kept in chains of darkness until the judgment of the great day, which shall come at the end of the earth. And even so will I cause the wicked to be kept. 
that will not hear my voice but harden their hearts and whoa 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 is their doom you can use this for spiritual warfare but behold the residue of the wicked have i kept in chains of darkness until the day until the judgment of the great day um about a year ago when i was going through a lot of attacks by satan and the wicked the father told me he's like I say, I arrest you until the day of judgment. And when he brought me here, I actually seen that this was in scripture, but also I know like, yeah. So when they're attacking you so much, um, God, you can tell the father, father, please arrest them until the day of judgment. And he will. And you can go for this scripture because some of them are so relentless, less relentless and, you know, stubborn pursuers. And even so will I cause the wicked to be kept that will not hear my word, hear my voice, but rather their heart in their hearts and woe, woe, woe is their doom. But behold, verily, verily, I say unto you that my eyes are upon you and I am in your midst and you cannot see me. But the day soon comes that you shall see me and know that I am for the veil of darkness shall soon be rent and he that is not purified shall not abide the day. Didn't I tell you Satan has a wicked veil in the sky that blocks out people's prayers? You see when Daniel told you he was fighting with the prince of Persia and Michael the holy archangel had to help him with his prayers. Did you not understand? This, this wicked thing, he tries to block out people's prayers with his wicked veils, his witchcraft veils he puts up in the air and in the skies and over people's environments, over some people's houses. He's wicked, all right? Wherefore, grate up your loins and be prepared. Behold, the kingdom is yours. But Satan doesn't want you to have it, but behold, the kingdom is yours. And the enemy shall not overcome. You can use that as scriptures. You can use that. Behold, the kingdom is yours. And the enemy shall not overcome. Verily I say unto you, you are clean, but not all. And there is none else with whom I am well pleased. For all flesh is corrupted before me. And the powers of darkness prevail upon the earth. So he's telling you that. So if the powers of darkness prevail upon the earth, you need the power of God to stop it. The power of God's word among the children of men in the presence of all those hosts of heaven which causes silence to reign the vow of silence their evil oaths of silence to hurt the righteous which causes silence to reign secret societies people and all eternity is pained and the angels are waiting the great command to reap down the earth so the holy angels are waiting for the command of god to reap down the earth to gather the tears that they have that they may be burned and behold the enemy is combined and now i show you show unto you a mystery a thing which is had in secret chambers to bring to pass even your destruction in process of time and you knew it not but now i tell it unto you and you are blessed not because of your iniquity neither your hearts of unbelief remember the fearful and unbelieving they'll go in the lake of fire for verily some of you are guilty before me, but I will be merciful unto your weakness. <laughs> what did he say? He'll be merciful unto your weakness because what is, if I should have put the scripture here, um, his power, he gives power, on, God gives power unto the weak. So he's, um, what did he say? But I will be merciful unto your weakness, right? Therefore be ye strong from henceforth. Fear not for the kingdom is yours. And for your salvation, I give unto you a commandment. For I have heard your prayers, and the poor have complained before me, and the rich have I made. And all flesh is mine, and I am no respecter of persons. And I have made the earth rich, and behold, it is my footstool. Wherefore, again, I will stand upon it, and I will hold forth and reign to give Unto you greater riches, even a land of promise, a land flowing with milk and honey, upon which there shall be no curse when the Lord comes. So no curse is Satan, no curse land will have there's not gonna be no curse on the land. 
and I will give it unto you for the land of your inheritance. If you seek it with all your hearts, when do you get God's land of your inheritance? When you seek it with all your hearts. And this shall be my covenant with you. And you shall have it for the land of your inheritance and for the inheritance of your children forever. While the earth shall stand and you shall possess it again in eternity. No more to pass away. But verily I say unto you that in time you shall have no more, shall have no king nor ruler. For I will be your king and watch over you. Wherefore, hear my voice and follow me, and you shall be a free people, and you shall have no laws but my laws when I come, for I am your lawgiver, and what can stay my hand? But verily I say unto you, teach one another according to the office wherewith I have appointed you. So what should we teach one another? What God called us up to do, not our own office. We don't go teaching our brother and sisters and the body of Christ, what we want to go and teach them? No. You teach one another according to the office wherewith I have appointed you. What God appointed you to do in the office of the body of Christ, that is what you teach and do. And let every man esteem his brother as himself. So not just love your wife as yourself. You're supposed to love your brother and your sister as yourself and the people in the body of Christ as yourself. And practice virtue and holiness before me. So what are you supposed to practice? Virtue and holiness. Holiness is being set apart. So you're going to have to learn to spend time alone and seek God's face so he can teach you. And you can learn and you can learn your calling, your duty and what you're appointed to do. So that's holiness. God is set apart. You got to be set apart too so you could understand him. And again, I say unto you, let every man esteem his brother as himself. Now, 1 John 4 and 4, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. One of my favorite scriptures is 1 John 4 and 4. <laughs> Makes me want to cry right now. Um, um, Isaiah 28 and 1, woe to the crown of pride. To the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glory, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. So God says, he wanted me to explain this Isaiah 28 and 1. This is not just about the drunkards of Ephraim. It's about people who have a crown of pride and are drunkards. What will happen to people who have crowns of pride on them and and they're, and um, our drunkards, he says their beauty will fade away like a flower. Right? Now, Luke 11 and 21, when a strong man armed keeps his place, palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he takes from him all his armor wherewith he trusted and divides his spoil. Who does that sound like? The enemy. The enemy. When you're not guarded with God's word, like when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, Satan is trying to overcome you. You're supposed to overcome him with the power of God. When a strong man comes in your house, he's trying to overcome you. You need to overcome him with the power of God. He takes from him all his armor. Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Wherewith he trusts and divides his spoil. Satan divides the spoil with the wicked, with his agents. Matthew 11 and 23. He that is not with me is against me. So whoever is not with you, they're against you. And he that gathers not with me scatters. So anyone who's not gathering with you, they're scattering what you have. That is what that means. If they're not gathering with you, they're scattering what's yours. They're spoiling what's yours. They're stealing what's yours. They're trying to overcome you. John 16 and 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Why? Because you got all these people trying to kill, steal, and destroy and overcome you. And spoil you. But Christ tells you, he's written this to you, that you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. 
God wants you to overcome the world. Christ wants you to go overcome the world. I want you to overcome the world. Holy Spirit wants you to go overcome the world. 1 John 2 and 14. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong. And, and the word of God abides in you. And ye have overcome the wicked one. Why does Satan give young men, women, all these whores? Because strong men retain riches. And because God made young men strong, he wants to make them weak. So he gives them all these whorelets and young girls and has these young men sleeping around because God made young men strong. And destroys them with soul ties and sleeping around and spirit ties and whorelets and concubine life and all that foolishness. And the word of God abides in you. The word of God abides in young men. So Satan doesn't want them speaking it. And you have overcome the wicked one. That's the blessing God put on young men. Why do you think Satan gives them have so much girlfriends and all that foolishness? Hoes and bitches have them disrespect and women won't let them marry. Because he doesn't want them strong, people of God. 1 John 2 and 13. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him from the beginning. I write unto you, young man, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. You'll overcome the wicked one when you're walking with God. Revelations 13 and 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. So you know Satan, he has. it was given to him to make war with you and to overcome you. And power was given to him so power is given to satan to do this over all the kindreds and tongues and the nations why do you think he goes for these men these young men because god they are strong and the word of god abides in them if they seek god god's word will be in them and they will be great and they will be strong and they will retain riches that's why he tries to destroy them when they're teenagers Revelations 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death, but they overcame him by the word of their testimony. What does it tell you about these young men? Because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. What? They overcome him what with what? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. This is why he's always trying to twist up the scriptures and do all kind of wickedness. You young men, stay strong in God and seek him. If you seek him early, you shall find him. Knock and the door shall be open. Seek and you shall find. Make sure you look for your father on your hands and knees and with fasting and praying. He will be there for you. Beautiful people of God, I hope this blessed you. I hope this helped you. And we are overcomers. And we will overcome for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith, have faith and you will. May God bless you. May God keep you. And may he protect you with Psalms 91. Stay blessed.